Hi, welcome to Green TV, the show dedicated to Green New Deal positive solutions and the uh, independent Green and Green Party candidates who advocate for them. I'm Gail Farrell Parker, and here with me today is Carrie Campbell and Mr. David Freeman. The independent Greens of Virginia advocate for jobs, eco jobs for the economy, solar jobs, wind jobs, geothermal energy jobs, rail jobs, conservation jobs, and weatherization jobs. More Virginians work in renewable energy jobs than in coal, some 11,000. As I said, we are honored today to have with us an eco-pioneer, David Freeman. As our viewers may recall, Ralph Nader recommended Mr. Freeman to us. David Freeman is an American engineer, attorney, and author. Mr. Freeman is an advocate for renewable energy with credentials. In 1990, Mr. Freeman became general manager of Sacramento Municipal Utility District, or SMUD, and he helped to turn a poorly managed SMUD into a model of efficiency, service, and innovation. Mr. Freeman has also headed other major energy organizations, including the Tennessee Valley Authority, the New York Power Authority, and the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. Mr. Freeman is also an author of several books, including Winning, Winning Our Energy Independence, published in 2007, and he has a new book coming out. In Winning Our Energy Independence, Mr. Freeman says that we have the renewable energy we need to wean ourselves from three poisons, foreign oil, dirty coal, and dangerous nuclear power. Welcome, Mr. Freeman. Well, it's good to be here on this uh, chilly evening, I might add. <laughs> yes, it, it has been very cool. Uh, Mr. Freeman, uh, in your book you say that the future of uh, humanity requires the development of renewable sources of energy. Why do you say that? Well, because it's true. <laughs> uh, but since I wrote the book, uh, which is seven years ago, the advance in the economy of solar and wind power is probably the most dramatic thing that's happened. You know, the newspapers are all full of the stuff about the fact that oil prices have gone down, but what they don't tell you is that solar power costs have gone down a whole lot more. And today, you can build a power plant uh, with solar power or wind power, and over the life of the plant, it's gonna be lower in cost than any of these poisonous things. And so the revolution is kind of underway uh, but somehow or another, it, it hadn't made the mainstream uh, media yet. Uh, and in the meantime, we're learning more and more about the dangers of climate. So we're in this interesting paradox that the problem is worse and worse, but the solution is in hand, and we just don't seem to have uh, the leadership ability uh, or the old-fashioned American uh, can-do-it attitude uh, to uh, take the solutions and implement them. You know, over the years, I'm, I'm 89 years old, and so I've seen a lot of this country's history. But over the years, uh, there, you know, if we had a, a problem as awesome as this, uh, we just grabbed it by the nap of the neck and shook it real hard and solved it. I mean. Everybody is saying that this climate issue, and they say it correctly, is the most awesome thing that's ever threatened the planet. Well, if it's all that bad, and we have the solution in hand, why aren't we making it happen? And I can't get an answer out of it, anybody. I mean, when the birds were endangered by DDT, we outlawed it. Uh, when we had seat belts, and the car companies wouldn't put them in. Ralph Nader got the law passed uh, to mandate them. Uh, you know, if we needed to build a highway system, Dwight Eisenhower uh, formed, taxed, and implemented, and the federal government built the interstate highways. Uh, you know, when President Kennedy decided that we should go to the moon, he didn't uh, uh, suggest some cap and trade tax system. The uh, federal government went out and built the 
technology to take us to the moon. And the interesting thing is the reason we have photovoltaic uh, solar power today is because the space program. We invented the solar uh, technology because we needed to have electricity for the spacecraft. Now we're using it here on Earth, uh, and it's starting to happen. Uh, but people are, are not grabbing this ball and running with it. The environmental community and the political leaders are on the defense when they ought to be on the offense. Uh, the general public, I think, is under the mistaken impression that it's going to cost them more money if we come clean, where it's just the opposite. Uh, and it's beginning to happen a little bit. New companies like uh, Solar City are going directly to customers and putting solar panels in in California and Hawaii and undercutting the utilities. So the revolution is underway. It just ain't on TV yet, but we're putting it on it TV tonight, right here. Right, we certainly are. Could you explain a little bit more about why it is that solar uh, is going to be less costly to the consumer? Yeah, it's very simple. If you have a power plant and the fuel to run it is free, that makes it cheaper. Once the power plant is paid off, and they usually get paid off in about 10, 12, 14 years, after that, you know, there, it doesn't take a lot of folks uh, to run a solar panel. Nobody, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, the labor is de minimis. The upkeep is, I guess you come once a year and wash it down or something. So it's really kind of like a dam. Let me tell you, I, I ran utilities. The cheapest power in America today are the dams that we built in the 30s and the 40s, the hydropower, because the dams are paid off and the electricity is essentially free. Well, wind and solar are not quite like that, but they're pretty much like that. So, so if you look at the life of a solar plant or a wind plant, it might cost a little bit more year one, but as you'd appreciate it, its costs go down and after a few years, you've got essentially free power. The plain truth of the matter is if we don't go to renewable energy all out, uh, we not only are gonna get cooked by the climate, but the Chinese who are doing it are gonna beat our, you know what, economically. So it's a matter of survival on both the climate front and the economic front that everything new should be. Why are we fooling around with cockamamie schemes of taxation and all this stuff to try to persuade somebody to go come clean? Why not a simple law? Everything new must be renewable. Why is the Green Party advocating that? I mean, I don't even hear the good guys in Congress coming out and telling the American people the truth on this issue, that we have invented a better mousetrap. I mean, the Sheikh Yamani of Saudi Arabia said it very well. We did not end the Stone Age because we ran out of stones. We ended it because we <laughs> invented something better. Leave it in the ground. Why are we fracking at all? Why are we opening up anything more for further development of oil and gas? We need to be putting the oil and gas companies out of business over a 30 year per period, one year at a time. And you can just do the math in your head. If we reduced the use of fossil fuels and nuclear power 3% a year, as we built the new stuff in 30 years time, we will build us an entirely clean electric system and we will be rid of the other. And let me tell you, substituting electricity for gasoline in running a car is going to be a great step forward in efficiency. You know what the cost of running an electric car is compared to gasoline? It's about, it's less than a dollar a gallon because the electric motor is 98% efficient and the internal combustion engine isn't. So that if we use heat pumps to heat our homes rather than gas furnaces and use electricity for everything, we're going to greatly reduce the total amount of energy. We're going to cut our costs and we'll have something that is regulated. There's a big difference between your utility that has to, to base their prices on costs plus just a reasonable profit and the oil companies that make a whopping profit even at today's prices. So uh, what I'm talking about is something that is really, um, uh, I think my friend Ralph Nader support, would support me. It is 
going to reduce costs to the consumer. At the same time, it's going to save us from climate change. And we're fooling around just yakking. And we have a president that is not even proposing anything that will change us and get us off of oil and gas in the transportation and heating sector. Let me tell you, uh, this country is exceptional in a lot of ways, and one of them is bragging. <laughs> we are the only civilized country uh, that I know of that hasn't electrified our railroads. And, and that one step, why do we have these big trucks hauling stuff across the country yeah. and burning up all this fuel? An electric transportation system has got to be part of this new book I'm writing entitled An All-Electric America That's All Renewable. And it will truly be independent. I mean, the sun and the wind belong to everyone, but we will use the stuff that comes directly to America by Mother Nature. We won't have to worry about who the king of Saudi Arabia is and what Iran is doing. Uh, we will truly be energy independent and the money will all stay here, and you can breathe easily, and it will be quiet in the streets because these electric cars make hardly any noise at all. You're watching Green TV with uh, uh, world-renowned, uh, great American lawyer and engineer, David Freeman, talking about uh, renewable energy, eco jobs for the economy. I'm Kerry Campbell, the Independent Green Party, our host today, Gail Farrell Parker of the Independent Green Party. And I want to say, uh, Don, uh, Mr. Freeman, a, a couple of things just to support the, the points you made. The financial well, I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> the Financial Times reports today that a gentleman named Lee Hajun, who I'd never heard of before I picked up the Financial Times, is China's richest billionaire because he owns Hanergy a solar energy of course. company. They're doing it. They are doing it. Uh, Hanergy, uh, a solar energy company, was just founded in 2013, and uh, the price of its stock is now up 1,200 times since it was founded in, in 2013. Yeah. But what the press didn't publicize is when the Chinese met with President Obama a couple of months ago, they told him that they are going to build as much renewable energy between now and 2030 as the entire United States electric system. Goodness. They're going to do it because they don't have to pass any cap and trade bill. If the Chinese government decides to do something, they do it. The American government used to do that on important things, but now we seem to be unable to decide on the time of day in Washington. Uh, but we can, and I just think that uh, what the American people just have not been told, in plain English, that solar and wind and the storage technology so that you can use it, uh, store it when you have it and use it when you need it, is all available. It's happening in California. Let me give you one statistic that is not in the public domain. 35% of all of the new electricity that came online in America last year was solar. Yes. 35%? So it's 35% okay. was solar mm -hmm. without, so it's beginning to happen. The, the question is not whether we're going to go all renewable. The question is whether we're going to do it over a hundred year period and cook in the meantime, or whether we can do it in 35 years and not cook. And, and that's really the issue. And uh, frankly, it's up to the American people to demand uh, and know what the option uh, Like Most people don't know a heat pump from a hole in the ground because nobody's ever talked about heat pumps. But a heat pump is an elegant device that even on a cold day like this, there is heat out in the air and there's heat in the ground and it sucks it into your house and warms your house rather than burning a bunch of fossil fuels and creating greenhouse gases. That technology is greatly advanced and it's economic. It costs a bit to begin with. Well, it ought to be financed by the utility and you pay back in the utility bill out of the savings. I had a program like that at the Tennessee Valley Authority way back in the 70s. They still have it going. It's a, it can be done. We can do these things, but people need to know that they're possible and available. And we really need to step up the pace at which 
uh, the cars go electric. We need to have a program for electrifying the railroads. We need to start figuring out how we can extract hydrogen from water uh, with just heat of the sun and chemicals, and then we'll have all that we need. Uh, you know, once this country were to decide, kind of the way uh, the President Kennedy decided we're going to the moon, then we're going to have an all-renewable energy economy in 35 years and get to work in doing it, we can make it happen. And it will create not thousands of jobs, millions of jobs. Yep and good paying jobs yeah. and keep our economy going. But somehow or another, we've gotten bogged down in minutia. And I blame the good guys as much as the people that deny the science altogether because the people that know and believe that we are in trouble are not advocating the kind of things I'm talking about. They, yeah. they, they just somehow feel like it's a sin if the government were to decide to do something. What in the name of heaven do we have a government for if it isn't to solve the problems that we can't solve individually? Now, if you buy a gas guzzler, uh, I can have an electric car, but we both share the same planet, and you're gonna cook the planet, uh, and, and, and I can't do anything about it unless I get the government to require that you have an electric car just like me. I know human nature. People will not do it all voluntarily. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody puts the seatbelt in until we started mandating it. Well, independent greens advocate as a solution uh, rail for our transportation. Well, that's a big part of it, yeah. and, and you're, you're right, but, it, but it's a piece. I mean, the energy thing consists of heating buildings, transportation, and electricity. I think we can use renewable electricity to replace all of them. And obviously, uh, electric rail is just an obvious part of the solution. I mean, uh, it seems to me kind of an embarrassment, should be an embarrassment to everybody else that only the Green Party is advocating it. Where is the rest of the country blind, deaf, dumb, or what? Well, let me, uh, let me highlight some of the good guys and the good gals of the Independent Green Party and the Green Party. I'll start just with the folks that are running for office in Virginia this year, all of them advocating the Green New Deal, uh, what, eco what? jobs for the economy, solar, wind, geothermal. Yeah, and but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be kind of argumentative with you. Those are good words, but what are they proposing to make it happen? Sure. Let, can I mention sure. Yeah, you can. Uh, uh, for local office, uh, Albert Burkhart, uh, Board of Supervisors in Isle of Wight County. Aaron Lyles for Bonacourt uh, County School Board. Gail Farrell Parker right over there, Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. Maria Wisser, uh, Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. Joe Galdo, Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. Chris DiCarlo, Fairfax County Sheriff. Tariq Salahi, Warren County Board of Supervisors. Pete Marchetti, the Fairfax County School Board at large, Dr. Catherine Pettigrew, Fairfax County School Board Braddock District, Jesse Ray Whitaker, Fredericksburg City Council, Dr. Audrey Clement, Arlington County School Board. Those are some of, some of the folks uh, running for local office. And what we advocate for is exactly the kind of program that you have uh, described that you had when you uh, you know, Dr. Freeman, uh, uh, also, we've got nine minutes in the show to go. Uh, uh, ran the Tennessee Valley Authority, ran a power company in New York, ran a power company in California. Uh, we're advocating what I've done with my house. We walk it like we talk it. 51 solar panels on my house, geothermal heating and cooling, uh, what you've described. And in the case of local government, Fairfax County government, financing that, through the infrastructure of government, uh, uh, through the infrastructure of the capital infrastructure. I think that's wonderful, but not enough. I mean, why can't we use the states? If we can't get the Congress to pass any laws, right. let's take it one state at a time. California right. is kind of doing it. Uh, the governor of California has come out and said by 2030, we have to be at 50% renewable. Now, why can't every other state do the same thing. Sure. Why can't all these good people right. be getting together and proposing to the Virginia legislature at least consider a law? Let's just get that into the debate. And if we can get enough states to adopt it, uh, that's, that's progress. Uh, but 
you know, I was in New York uh, recently where there was a big parade of a lot of beautiful young people parading for environmental justice. But when I asked them, well, what do you mean by that? They didn't know. Sure. Uh, we've got did, a, did I uh, answer your question? Uh, partially. <laughs> <laughs> uh, th these are people who, who, with a heart of gold, who want yeah. us to go green. But what I'm saying is, we got to get. There are a lot of Green Party people there too. Dr. Jill Stein. The, we, uh, we, we've got we've got to get uh, mandates because uh, a lot of people still smoke even when it's clear that they're killing themselves. Right. You will never get enough. And this is kind of like the measles in the sense that the people that don't get vaccinated are hurting the folks that do. The people that are driving the SUV may be indivi exercising individual choice, but unless we require them to come clean, uh, the planet's going to cook. Because there's just an awful lot of people that are just not going to do it on their own, including a lot of good people that just don't ever get around to it. So I think the big issue that I am trying to raise is mandates versus voluntary compliance. Now we can brag about all the volunteers. I'm from Tennessee, a volunteer state, but this is an issue where volunteering isn't going to get the job done. We, we've got to go to where the big guys, the big polluters are required by law to reduce their greenhouse gases 3% a year each year. And every year that we don't get it done, it makes that hill steeper and steeper to climb it because either you believe the climate, they say we've got to get down to zero in 35 years. Well, if we don't start this year, uh, the climb is just tougher every year and it won't happen. And frankly, it's already happening. Climate is not a futuristic issue. It's, I mean, the winters are getting colder and the summers are hotter. And, uh, it, but what really breaks my heart is that if there were no climate problem, we ought to be doing this anyhow. We are just being bamboozled by the ads of the oil and gas industry and people who just have not been told that we can store the sun and the wind when it happens and use it when it doesn't happen. The technology is there. It's beginning to be implemented in California. It needs to spread like wildfire across the country. Mm -hmm. But and and I'm congratulate you people for putting some time on on TV to tell people about it. Because right now our biggest problem is people don't know that it's possible. Well, there's a lot of uh, positive news out there and a lot of positive solutions. Uh, and you mentioned uh, folks running for state office. The Independent Green Party of Virginia has. Uh, Joe Odo in the 57th district. It's a big state election this year for House of Delegates in Virginia. Uh, William Henry Jones Jr., Mouse. Uh, Colonel Jim Leslie, Diane Blay, Steve Peshore, Joe Glean, Ron Fisher, Ken Hildebrand, Joe Morrissey, a current member of the House of Delegates. Uh, in well, I have some advice for those folks. Yes, sir. They ought to be running on a consumer ticket. I would say, you know, we're the Green Party. But what we're advocating is going to reduce your damn light bill. Yeah. It's going to reduce your gas bill. Yeah. We're going to have cheaper energy. And incidentally, it'll be cleaner too. That that's kind of will surprise people because thus far, the Greens have just talked green. And everybody expects you to talk green if you're green. But I think that the message, the stronger message is we're not only I mean, clean. David Freeman, I have to disagree with you there. As much yeah. as, uh, the Green Party is in every state legislature in Germany. It's going to shortly be governing over half of, right. the, of the state legislatures in Germany, and the number two employer in Germany is renewable energy. Uh, it has the Greens in office in Europe have, have proven, just like you said, but why, why, why are you saying you disagree with me? The Green Party has been emphasizing exactly what I say. Well, I, then I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the point about it is I think yeah. we're making half of our argument. The other half is that we've, got, we've invented a better mousetrap. Yeah. We've got to get a much more, we're on the defense. I mean, if you just pick up the, the ordinary media, there's still the impression that coming clean is going to cost people we're going to have to sacrifice. Well, that sure. is a lie. 
Sure. Yeah, it, 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 is an, it is an opportunity for more jobs and lower costs for our energy supply. And all I'm saying is that I don't think that the environmental movement and in, in, in the Green Party's part of it has sufficiently emphasized the fact that it is cheaper. We're on the defense on that issue when we should be on the offense. Well, I think that but when we say eco jobs for the economy, we yeah, say well, solar jobs, wind yeah, jobs. Yeah, jobs are one thing, but people, everybody in this country pays a light bill. Mm -hmm. And if you tell them that what we're doing will actually reduce their electric bill, that is a powerful message and it hasn't it isn't being delivered strongly enough. I'm well, Kerry Campbell, and I'm a candidate for Braddock mm -hmm. District endorsed by the Independent Green Party of Virginia, and I'm telling you that if you use renewable <laughs> energy like solar, it will reduce your light bill. Right. Did I get it right? Yeah, you got it. You're a quick learner. <laughs> Mr. Freeman, uh, we have just a, a news item that came in. Uh, I, I, yeah. Uh, saying that it was a concern about the climate uh, change and the threat to human health, a major health care provider is Red Meat. Yeah. Reverend, announced that they are doubling down on its commitment to renewable energy. The Oakland based company, which runs hospitals and clinics across the country, detailed plans to purchase enough renewable energy to provide for half of its energy needs in California and reduce its greenhouse gas emissions nationally by 30 percent. That's a good start. I think we have a good start. I just want a great finish. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Uh, oh, we've only got uh, about uh, a minute. Can you take 30 seconds and tell us, well, some people believe that hydrogen is, or nuclear power, is the solution to having clean energy and reducing well, uh, dependence. There, there's Why a, is that there's not? a special place in hell that's waiting for those folks. I mean, tell them to go to Fukushima, Japan and t say that to the people of Japan. I mean, nuclear power has failed on every front. It is it was advertised as too cheap to meter, it's too expensive to use. For 50 years, uh, we, we've wiped out a good chunk of the Ukraine, we scared the dickens out of everybody in Pennsylvania, and we wiped out a good chunk of Japan. We got these old reactors, and, and they are dangerous, they need to be shut down, and they create uh, radioactive trash that has been piling up for 50 years, and the industry itself says we don't know where to put it. There's only one answer, birth control. We need to stop making that stuff. <laughs> Excellent point. Thank you all for being with us today. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Uh, and it's my thank pleasure. you, Mr. Campbell, yeah, for being here. here. Gail. I like your Campbell yes, hat. Yes. And I'm going <laughs> to join Mr. Freeman in advocating for renewable energy. Great. <laughs> See you again next time.